Hi everyone, how are you doing today? In this video I want to discuss how I made this still life. You can do this with a soft box, but I wanted to show you that you can get a great shot with little equipment, so today I'm using natural light of my window in the studio. That's why I moved my desk and placed the table next to the window. Before I started shooting, I thought about what I wanted in the photo. I wanted to create a dark, still life with beautiful, dramatic light, using things I already have at home. Lavender is currently blooming in our garden, and I was inspired by the beautiful color, so I decided to venture into lavender tea. For a still life, a good composition is half the battle. I wanted to use diagonal lines. Using diagonal lines will draw your eyes into a particular area of the photo. In addition, the lines do not always have to be clearly visible in order to respond very well to our subconscious. Here you can see how I use diagonal lines by placing the objects with the purple color in a triangle. And I let the branch with the leaves and the light come from the other side at the same angle as the lavender. There is so much to see. But you still maintain peace in the photo because your eyes are led to the teapot. In addition, the teapot is the lightest area in the photo, another element to guide your viewer to a point. As a surface, I used the shelf from an old cupboard. The shelf is not very wide, but by being creative with the space you have, you will not notice it. Recently I bought a single floor tile at the hardware store and I used it as a background. I want to add different textures to the photo, so I use a piece of burlap fabric that I drape over the tile and the shelf. In the other corner I put a stack of old books, with a bouquet of lavender from my own garden and in the middle of the shelf I put a teapot and a cup. Then it's time to fill the teapot with tea. I'm a real coffee lover so I don't have purple tea. So I drip some food coloring into the cup and teapot and fill it with hot water. By using hot water you get some nice condensation on the glass, really giving the impression that you are dealing with hot tea instead of just water and food coloring. Unfortunately, I only have blue dye instead of purple, so to match the tea with the flowers, I change the color in the editing process. A bit cheating, but hey, I have to work with what I have. In my camera, I can choose what kind of grid I want to display on the live screen. This grid here shows the rule of thirds and the diagonal lines in between them. With the camera in place and the grid in view, all I have to do is make some final adjustments to align the elements in the scene into the correct composition and then we can start directing the light. I want a narrow strip of light to shine diagonally from the front, so I block half of the window with a piece of insulation board. I want to direct the remaining light in a way that it only shines on the teapot. I do this by blocking parts of the scene with a piece of black foam board and a piece of black paper. Yet something is still missing. For some extra texture, I sprinkle some flower petals that I found in our garden. I'm in a somewhat awkward position, so I use a remote control to take the picture while holding the piece of black paper to direct the light. If you don't have a remote, you can use a self-timer on your camera. Make sure to take several photos of the same setup to choose the best photo where the light is on its best. Natural light sometimes change, making every photo look different. Then all I have to do is some finishing touches in Photoshop and the picture is complete. And in the same way I took this photo. Same setup, 
different camera angle. I hope that this example has taught you something or inspired you to get started with it yourself. Don't hesitate to share your version with me because I'd love to see them. Let me know what you think of this video in the comments down below and subscribe for free for more photography and art. Have a nice day, until next time.